Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this Friday morning devotional. Whether you're listening early in the morning or later in the day or even in the evening, whatever has become your pattern, I'm grateful that you have made the choice to follow these devotionals with Tom Wright, our author, and I. I'm Pastor David Fullen of the Drakesboro and Jurgen's Chapel, United Methodist Churches, and I'm so grateful that you have come to hear uh, the Word of God and Dr. Wright's reflections. I'll, I have lit the Christ candle, and now let's begin with a word of prayer. Holy Father, we lift this desire before you that we would be focused on you and that you will enter our hearts and minds and renew us more and more in your image. We pray, Father, that you will reach out and care for our loved ones Let them know how much you love them and that we might hear something in the scripture or in the uh, thoughts of our author Tom Wright that that would stick with us, something that we could have uh, to hold on to for this next portion of life. There are many, many things going on in our world, good and bad, and we pray, Father, that you will enable us to set a new standard for love and honor. We love you and we praise you for opening our hearts this morning. It's all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, This is the Friday after Ash Wednesday devotional. We are going to read Mark 4, the whole chapter, but we will focus on chapter 4, verses 18 through 25, and those are the verses that I'll read now. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. They were fishermen and were casting nets into the sea. Follow me, said Jesus, and I'll make you fish for people. Straight away they abandoned their nets and followed him. He went on further and saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and his brother and John his brother. They were in the boat, mending their nets with Zebedee, their father. He called them. At once they left the boat and their father and followed him. He went on through the whole of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease and every illness among the people. Word about him went out around the whole of Syria. They brought to him all the people tormented with various kinds of diseases and ailments, demon-possessed people, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. Large crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. There's a sense of excitement. Oh, here are Dr. Wright's thoughts. There's a sense of excitement at the start of the season. The ground is prepared and marked out. The future list, sorry, the fixture list is printed. Everything is ready. So along you go for the first match. But imagine what it would be like If, just before the game was due to start, the coach came onto the pitch and began to point to people in the stands, people who had come as spectators, 
All right, you over there. Come on. And you in the blue jacket, you too. And you there hiding near the back. I want you in the team. You begin to be afraid. You might be next. Suddenly, the people who've been called are hurrying down to the field of play, and the game begins. Of course, no serious sports team would do that, do it like that, or if they did, they wouldn't win many matches. But this is the strange thing. When God came back at last, coming to establish the rule of heaven here on earth, that seems to be exactly how he went about it. Lots of people who thought they were just spectators suddenly found themselves summoned onto the playing field. As the story goes on, we find out that they, like modern spectators dragged from the stands and made to play the game, were not as ready or as fit as they might have been. But it seems that's how God wanted to work. There's something going on there which gets near the heart of the challenge of the gospel for us today. It's very easy for people to imagine that they can be religious. They can say their prayers. They can go to church. They can read the Bible. But basically, they are looking on spectating while God does whatever God is going to do. And, of course, there's a sense in which that's true. God is not weak, helpless, waiting for humans to get their act together before he can do anything. But, in another sense, part of the point is that God always wanted humans to be part of the action, not just spectators. God made humans to reflect his image, his presence, his love, his plans into the world. That's why he himself came into the world as a human being. And that's why Jesus called Peter, Andrew, James, and John, and the others. They weren't ready. They weren't expecting it. But that's how Jesus worked then. And that's how he works to this day. Perhaps that's why you're reading Matthew's Gospel right now. Perhaps Jesus is going to point to you and ask you to help him with some of the work. Of course, there were still quite a lot of people who remained spectators. As Jesus went about the healing people, which was the most dramatic way of showing them that heaven really was taking charge on earth, it was natural that great crowds followed him from all over. But here's another challenge. What should the church be doing today that would make people realize that heaven is actually in charge here and now? When we find the answer to that question, there will be lots more spectators, and we may hope lots more players too. Our prayer today, Gracious Lord, help us to be ready when you call us to work with you. Amen. Amen. I do pray that we would all be ready when he calls us to work with him. It may be today. It may be the first place you go today. May God bless you and keep you until we meet again. Amen.